O Lord. You think you're failing at life? Look at me. I just turned 55, and my life is a freaking mess. <laughs> but I'm not going to give up. You know, there comes a point in life where you think, hmm, it's too late for me. I've made too many mess-ups in my life. I've made too many bad decisions, and it's too late to fix them. It's too late to fix my body. It's too late to fix my skin. You know, it's too late to fix my living situation. It's too late to get a partner because nobody's going to want an old 55-year-old partner. Right? <laughs> I just turned 55, 55, like about an hour ago. I tried this a few weeks ago. I uploaded a video saying that I was ready to start and I was ready to get motivated and to make changes. Hello, are you anything like me? Irrelevant, because you're old, not attractive, not thick. I have saggy boobs. I live in a dumpy apartment with a roommate who likes Barbies. I've been having panic attacks uh, in the night for, you know, quite a while wondering what's going to become of me if I'll ever be able to retire um, will I end up homeless? It's my birthday today so I thought this was the perfect day to start again day one, we're calling this day one Day one of 365, and I vow to make a small change, a small improvement, do something, some small baby step every day to achieve my goals, my life that I want to achieve. I am not a nutritionist. I do not want to give you nutrition advice. I get my nutrition advice from Dr. Michael Greger. His app is free. It's called The Daily Dozen, and you can get it for free and get your health and your nutrition in order. Day one. So this is the breakfast I used to eat every single day. Some toast with some vegan butter. And ta-da! I have changed based, based on Michael Greger's uh, book, How Not to Die, as well as the app, The Daily Dozen. I have been having oatmeal every morning, about a quarter cup of oats. I've got some flaxseed. That's about a tablespoon, about a tablespoon of hemp hearts. A quarter cup of walnuts raw and this is about a quarter cup of dried cranberries just cook it up with some hot water throw in a sweetener of choice if you so desire sometimes the dried fruit is sweet enough or if you're gonna put um, if you're gonna put almond milk in there if your almond milk is sweetened definitely don't put any sweetener because the almond milk that's sweetened is already super sweet. But I uh, usually use a little bit of agave and a little bit of unsweetened silk almond milk. Mix it up, sprinkle some cinnamon on there if you want. It's really delicious and a little bit healthier than bread and butter. Day two. I'm getting some exercise. I'm getting some exercise today.
So, it is time to incorporate some physical activity into my life on a daily basis. And so, I needed to go and get James, my dog, his V-Dog, vegan dog food. And it's, you know, a little ways away, maybe three miles from my house. So, I just decided to walk. And bonus... I took a few pictures of some beautiful urban scenery. The saggy boobs and the flat ass are real and they must be stopped. Day two. Day three. Nutrition. I've been vegan for 10 years. A healthy vegan? Not particularly. I got these vitamins. One tablet daily. Food cultured formula with targeted herbs and botanicals to support sustained energy levels, and more. What could be easier than adding a multivitamin to your diet? It's a no-brainer. And these were on sale at Whole Foods. So, yeah, there's 120. I take one a day. Should last me three months. No. Wait. Math. Don't fail me now. Four months. Four months. Wow. Awesome. Anyway. Day three. Hello. Welcome to day four. Day four of self-improvement. You know, some days I can just put myself out there looking, you know, hideous. But some days I just need to cover up. The hair is just a mess. The hair is a mess. And... So I'm incognito today, but I'm still working on myself. And here we go. Day four is all about journaling. I have been journaling. We'll count this as day four, but I've actually been doing this since, uh, let's see, the first day. Four, five. That's what? Very, very much. April 5th. Uh, so, yeah, and the first thing I wrote in here was, welcome home. Uh, as this journal is about manifesting a home that I love. So I write in here about how I feel in my new home that I am manifesting. How I feel, what I see, who's with me, what we're doing, and it's all about manifesting. If you know anything about the secret or, <laughs> or um, the law of attraction, that's, this is what this is based upon. But I suggest, you know, if you are one to write in a physical journal instead of just writing on your computer, which is fine too, I mean, maybe it's more eco-friendly, eco but something about holding it in my hand is kind of part of the experience, getting comfortable, getting in the moment, holding it in my hand with a nice pen that feels good in my hand, and I'm just writing, and I do this every day, and I'm going to do this every day, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. But let me read you just a little bit so you get an idea. And this is somewhat embarrassing because, you know, it's touchy-feely. It's all that deep, touchy-feely stuff. But, okay, so what did I write this morning? This is about me and my new home. Mornings are peaceful here. I love to watch the sunrise over the mountains. Dusk is equally as beautiful. Grammar may not be up to par here. 
but it's about the feeling. I think about this moment knowing that although time is eternal, the planet is not. It is a blessing to be here experiencing, experiencing this. I have a comfortable chair next to the fireplace from which I can look out and enjoy nature. There are homes in the distance and I wonder who lives there, what they are doing, whether they are happy. I silently bless them and send them love. Right? Yes. And I write about my new home and what it looks like and relationships that I will have and experience there and holidays I will experience there and all of that. So I suggest if this appeals to you, start feeling the life that you will have and create it. Create it. I'm creating it in physical form. Here it is. This is it. This is the life that I will have. Anyway, day four. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Hello. <laughs> it's day five. Day five. I'm taking James for his morning walk and trying to be mindful and to appreciate the moment. You know, very often when I do these tasks, these everyday tasks, like taking James out for his walk, I forget to enjoy it to be present, to appreciate nature, the beautiful weather, and, you know, spending time with, with my kid. It's not just all about getting it done. Oh, look. Someone had a fun night last night. It is Sunday. Somebody's Saturday night. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to enjoy this walk. Take my time. Not in a rush. We're just going to walk. We're going to explore a little and enjoy this moment. And try to remember that for the future. Day six. Day six is when I decide from this day forward, whenever I can take the stairs, I will take the stairs. You know, take the stairs and tighten up those glutes because, you know, the butt cheeks, they need a little bit of help. Gravity has taken its toll. Day six. Wow, day seven already. Can you believe it? One week of 52, done. Day seven, moving forward, I will release my attachment to being perfect. As I've been trying to edit the footage that I've taken over the past week, it's very tempting to just toss the whole thing because the audio is horrible, the camera work sucks, basically it sucks, the quality sucks, content not stellar either, but this is a process, I'm just beginning, I have to allow myself to not be perfect, you know when I was a little child of six, seven years old, I was raised by a father who, although he did his best and thought he was, you know, helping me to be my best, would 
always uh, point out every single mistake that I made. He used to tell me that uh, if I had a pencil and the eraser wore out before the pencil lead, that I had made too many mistakes. He used to stand behind me when I would practice my violin and point out every time when I would make a mistake. I remember sitting there and crying, playing the violin, and he, he would say, another mistake. And I was just crying, tears, tears rolling down my face, playing my violin. And he would be over here and I'd be like, looking this way, and he'd come over here, say, another mistake, and I'd turn my head that way. Yeah, ridiculous. He did improve as he got older. He was a good person. He, he did his best. And he thought he was pushing me to be my best. But it just, and I'm 55 years old and these, these issues are still stuck in my head. So I need to, you know, move past it. So I have to put it out there right now. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay to, to start out where you start out. I don't, I'm not a great filmmaker. I'm not a great video editor, sound editor. But I will evolve as, as things go along. And this is week one of 52. So hopefully within the next several weeks, things will improve. But the whole point is I'm working on myself, putting it out there to hold myself accountable to doing something every day. So this is the end of week one. I'm really psyched that I got through one week and I'm looking forward to week two. So thank you so much. See you soon.